Empress Theodora, the wife of Emperor Justinian I of the Byzantine Empire, held considerable influence and authority. However, her journey to becoming a formidable empress was not easy. Opinions about Theodora vary greatly, with some depicting her as a controversial figure reminiscent of a X-rated Cinderella, others seeing her as cruel and egotistical, and still some consider her to be one of the first feminist icons. Hi, hello, welcome back to Browser History, which is a combination of the random stuff I Google, usually pertaining to the history behind captivating and controversial topics, as well as people throughout history. As always, I strive for a mix of education and entertainment in my videos. Most of what we know about the figures mentioned in this video comes from the 6th century historian Procopius. Theodora remains an enigmatic figure to say the least, with historians suggesting her birth around 500 AD. However, her true origins remain uncertain, as various accounts attribute her birthplace to Syria, Cyprus, or Paphlagonia, wherever that is. While details about Theodora's early years are not particularly noteworthy, she wasted no time in establishing a colorful reputation. According to most biographies, Theodora's father, Acacius, had an intriguing and unconventional occupation. He was a bear trainer employed at Constantinople's Hippodrome, which can be described as a combination of a sports arena and a circus. Meanwhile, Theodora's mother is believed to have been an actress and dancer. I'm assuming that Theodora inherited her father's adventurous spirit and her mother's captivating talents based on her choice of career. At the tender age of five, Theodora faced a devastating loss with the passing of her father. This unfortunate event not only inflicted emotional anguish upon young Theodora, but also brought turmoil to her family's life. Without her father's presence to support them, Theodora and her sisters were compelled to take on the responsibility of sustaining the family's survival. In order to do so, they chose to follow in their mother's controversial path. Theodora and her sisters embarked on a career in the performing arts, captivating large audiences with their charm and allure as actresses and dancers. Yet behind the glamorous facade of their profession lay a shadowy aspect. During that era, the term actress often served as a euphemism for a more scandalous occupation. This has led some historians to speculate whether Theodora and her sister might have engaged in schmeck's work because the algorithm doesn't like the actual word. According to the ancient writer Procopius, Theodora rose to prominence in the theater with a provocative performance. This act involved a dance reenactment of the Greek myth in which the god Zeus seduces Queen Lydia in the guise of a swan. The nature of her performance would later become the subject of scandal and controversy. Supposedly, Theodora's scandalous theater act involved using a goose instead of a swan, enticing it with scattered barley placed in an intimate area. This is ex this explicit performance aimed to captivate the audience and provoke a strong reaction. And I think we all know what kind of reaction that she was hoping for. In another account by Procopius, it is suggested that Theodora had additional provocative skills. One such act included her dancing with a ribbon, twirling it around her body, and astonishingly performing the routine while wearing nothing else but the ribbon itself. Which is really impressive if she managed to keep her private bits mostly concealed by that ribbon. Theodora wasn't solely known for her seductive performances. She also showcased her comedic talents as a mime and comedian in her youth. But Theodora's life was far from being solely focused on entertainment. Life in the ancient world was challenging for women. And Theodora faced a harsh reality at a young age. At 14, she became a mother, bearing a daughter whose name remains unknown to history. 
The circumstances of her daughter's birth indicate that Theodora had the child outside of marriage. Theodora entrusted the care of her baby to her relatives, considering her young age. However, she swiftly returned to her unconventional lifestyle. At the age of 18, Theodora became the mistress of a governor in ancient Rome. The details of him and Theodora's relationship are limited, but it lasted for four years, ending in a tumultuous manner. The exact reason for their separation remains unclear, with theories ranging from uncertainty to claims of mistreatment and sudden abandonment. Following the end of her relationship, Theodora underwent a dramatic transformation by joining a religious community. During her time at the religious commune, she embraced Maya Visitism. I hope I'm saying that correctly. <laughs> An early form of Christianity and denounced her previous life as a provocative entertainer, dedicating herself to a life of devotion to God, at least for the time being. Remaining a devout Mayaphysite, me, Mayaphysite, Maya, oh my gosh, I don't know how to say this word, until her death, <laughs> Theodora's rebellious nature persisted beneath her religious devotion. After departing from the commune, she relocated to the vibrant city of Antioch, where she crossed paths with a dancer and spy named Macedonia. Not to be confused with the country, it's, it's a person's name. Without hesitation, Theodora joined Macedonia in engaging in espionage activities. Historians speculate that during her time with Macedonia, Theodora played a role in covert operations reminiscent of Mission Impossible, surrounding provinces growing discontent with Constantinople's dominance fueled a demand for insider information. So, at this stage in her life, she's working with the city's spy network. Undoubtedly, Theodora was a figure of controversy, but her striking beauty was a consensus among observers. With her long, dark hair, captivating almond-shaped eyes, and olive complexion, she was hot. Like, Thea was a hottie. It, it's no wonder the Emperor was enamored upon seeing her. At this juncture, Theodora's life took a momentous turn as she embarked on her most daring role, that of an Empress. It's unknown how and where they met specifically, but in 522 AD, she captivated Emperor Justinian of East Rome upon their meeting. However, their union faced opposition and disapproval from various quarters due to their very different backgrounds. Justinian was deeply enamored with his alluring new partner, and with his parents no longer alive, it appeared natural for him to elevate Theodora from a mere girlfriend slash mistress to a royal bride. However, Justinian's aunt, Euphemia, or Euphemia, strongly opposed the idea, not only due to Theodora's scandalous past, but for another undisclosed reason that fueled her disapproval. Ironically, Aunt Euphemia's opposition to Theodora's past is hilarious, because she's a total hypocrite. Euphemia herself had a similar background, having come from a lower-class lifestyle and earned a living through Schmeck's work, she, just like the woman she now harshly judged, despite the undeniable parallels, Euphemia failed to recognize her own double standards. Despite Aunt Euphemia's efforts to prevent Theodora from becoming Justinian's wife, her demise in either 523 or 524 cleared the path for their royal wedding. However, Theodora soon discovered that obstacles other than an elderly lady's disapproval stood in her way of ascending to the throne. Theodora encountered a legal barrier, preventing her marriage to an emperor, but Justinian, demonstrating his deep commitment and affected by her influence, took the extraordinary step of changing the law to allow their union. This remarkable act transformed a former courtesan into the empress in 525 solidifying Theodora's remarkable rise to power. While some may dismiss Theodora as a mere, a mere social climber, she proved to be far more than just a decorative presence as the empress of the Byzantine Empire. Regarded by her husband, Justinian, as his trusted partner in decision-making, making many historians speculate that Theodora's influence went beyond mere contributions and suggests that she may have been the driving force behind his rule. Upon ascending to power, 
Theodora implemented significant reforms and reflected her empathy for those who had suffered as she once did. She criminalized pimping, eradicated brothels from cities, and established convents to provide safety and autonomy for vulnerable women. Alongside these commendable exchanges, Theodora's actions also carried a vengeful undertone. Theodora dedicated herself to aiding women who had suffered from the Schmex trade and took decisive measures to ensure justice for their perpetrators. Under her rule, rapists faced severe consequences, including execution, while those who failed to intervene were not exempt from punishment. Additionally, Theodora enacted a law that entitled victims to inherit the property of their attackers. I wish we had that law nowadays. In 532, Theodora's influence and a formidable reputation came to the forefront during a tumultuous event. While her husband, Emperor Justinian, attended a celebration, the discontented audience seized the opportunity to express their anger towards his tax policies. Theodora found herself in a critical position to navigate the escalating unrest. During the Nika Revolt in January of 532, a furious mob unleashed chaos and destruction, targeting Emperor Justinian and Theodora. The rebels united in their cause besieged the palace for five days, posing as a serious threat to Theodora's position. However, she refused to back down and prepared to make a defiant stand. Despite the advice to flee, Theodora chose to stay and deliver an empowering speech to Justinian and his men. She boldly proclaimed that it was her, a woman, who would set an example of courage for the men. Theodora's words challenged the notion of gender roles and rallied the forces to stand their ground. Against her husband's pleas to flee, Theodora firmly asserted her determination, refusing to abandon her status as empress. Rejecting offers of escape, she declared her preference to be buried in royal purple rather than to live as a commoner. Her resolute stance inspired Justinian to gather his courage and take action in defense of their rule. She was not going back to stripper life, that's for sure. Justinian and Theodora devised a strategic scheme, manipulating the rioters to turn against one another and punishing the senators who supported the revolt. In a brutal display of power, Theodora commanded her forces to corral and ruthlessly eliminate 30,000 rebels within the stadium. Her unwavering determination and willingness to shed blood sent a clear message of deterrence. Crossing paths with Theodora and her hubby came with severe consequences. Theodora's thirst for revenge knew no bounds as she disregarded the plea of the rebel's chosen emperor, ordering his execution despite his reluctance to assume the role. Her ruthless determination to eliminate any opposition showcased her uncompromising power and authority. Alongside her violent tendencies, Theodora displayed deep religious devotion. She provided assistance to exiled members of her Christian faction, facilitating their resettlement and offering refuge within her own properties for extended periods. However, for those who crossed her, such as her rival John of Cappadocia, the consequences were extreme. Concerned about the growing influence of tax collector John the Cappadocian, over her husband, Theodora resolved to remove him from power. After voicing her concerns to Justinian proved futile, she joined forces with Antonia, the wife of a renowned general, to devise a scheme aimed at trapping her rival and securing her own position. Under Theodora's instruction, her ally Antonia orchestrated a clandestine meeting with John where they supposedly discussed plotting against the emperor. Unbeknownst to John, Justinian's associates were present, ready to listen for any signs of treachery. If John took the bait, Theodora had commanded the men to execute him as punishment for his betrayal. Despite John's initial evasion, his enthusiastic agreement to Antonia's plan revealed his true intentions. This led to Justinian's allies taking immediate action, but John managed to escape capture temporarily. Nonetheless, Theodora's determination prevailed as the emperor, upon learning of John's betrayal, commanded his men to locate and exile the traitor. Obviously, I wasn't there, but from what I read, it seems like he spent the rest of life, the rest of his life in prison after that. 
Driven by her devotion to her chosen Christian sect, Theodora actively sought to expand its influence. Collaborating with a like-minded individual, she conspired to depose the, exi the existing pope and install her ally in his place. However, their plan faced a significant obstacle that needed to be overcome. After successfully exiling the old pope, Theodora's scheme took a turn for the worse when her husband Justinian learned of her actions. Unimpressed by her tactics, Justinian decided to bring the Pope back for a fair trial. However, unbeknownst to him, Theodora had another surprise in store. Continuing her devious plan, Theodora orchestrated the inception of the old Pope, ensuring that he never received the promised fair trial. Instead, he was exiled once more to a desolate island, where he tragically perished from starvation after only a few months. Amidst her vengeful tendencies, Theodora also demonstrated loyalty toward her close friend, Antonia. When Antonia's husband leveled a scandalous accusation against her, Theodora defended her, ensuring that she would not face punishment. Many historians believe that Antonia's husband fabricated the accusation as a means to divorce his wife. Theodora didn't hesitate to retaliate against Antonia's husband, a general, for his actions. It is said that she influenced the emperor to deny his request for reinforcements and supplies on the battlefield, displaying her scheming nature and determination to protect her friends. According to certain sources, Theodora displayed signs of a vicious ego and strong desire for control. It is alleged that she, re that she would require those of lower rank to prostrate themselves when she entered a room, showcasing her need for dominance and authority. It is said that Theodora enjoyed establishing networks of loyal individuals and using her influence to arrange advantageous marriages for her allies. While some of her matchmaking endeavors appeared to be well-meaning, such as pairing her sister with a prominent general, there were instances where some of her love matches turned out to be disastrous. Supposedly, Theodora compelled her grandson to marry a girl from a noble background against the wishes of the girl and her parents, contradicting Theodora's support for independent women. Fortunately, despite the coerced arrangement, the couple eventually developed a genuine affection for one another. Nevertheless, Theodora's actions raised concern about the means she employed to achieve her desired outcomes. You can't claim to support women's freedom and then force marriages. According to an ancient source that I'll mention later on, with a clear bias against her, Theodora was rumored to have played a role in the assassination of Queen Amala Suntha, which I'm probably pronouncing wrong, driven by jealousy over her beauty, intelligence, and relationship with Theodora's husband. Allegedly, Theodora orchestrated Amala Suntha's demise, staging her death during a bath to prevent a potential affair. However, it's important to consider the bias of the source and the speculative nature of these claims. Despite the rumors surrounding her, Theodora's legacy is marked by numerous remarkable accomplishments. Together with her husband, she played a pivotal role in the construction of magnificent structures in Constantinople, such as the renowned Hagia Sophia. Additionally, Theodora's advocacy resulted in a significant advancement for women, including expanded rights such as property, ownership, and the ability to seek divorce. Theodora's reign as empress eventually came to a close as she passed away on June 28th in 548 AD, at the, stage, at the age of either 48 or 51. The exact cause of her death remains uncertain due to translation challenges, but it's widely believed that she succumbed to breast cancer. However, the true tragedy unfolded after her demise. Following Theodora's death, her grief-stricken husband, Justinian, mourned deeply and remained unmarried as a testament to his enduring love. Her final resting place is the Church of the Holy Apostles in Constantinople, yet even in death, Theodora's legacy continues to live on. Even in her absence, Theodorus influence over Emperor Justinian's reign became evident as he significantly reduced his political activities. This suggested that Theodora had been the true mastermind behind the rule 
However, her reputation faced a significant blow when a controversial book emerged and undermined her many accomplishments. This brings us back to Procopius, who I think I briefly mentioned before. The reliability of Procopius's accounts on Theodora is widely debated as his three books present conflicting portrayals of her character. These conflicting narratives contribute to the challenge of understanding Theodora's true nature, leaving historians quite puzzled between viewing her as a virtuous heroine or a vengeful figure. Procopius initially wrote flattering accounts of Theodora while she was alive and later after her death, while Emperor Justinian was still alive. However, it was only after Justinian's death that Procopius published a book presenting a different perspective, purportedly revealing the real story of events within the palace. In his book, The Secret History, Procopius presented a highly sensationalized and discredited portrayal of Theodora as a powerful, hungry sociopath solely focused on controlling her husband. However, historians largely dismiss, dismiss these claims as exaggerated and or fabricated, considering them as a part of Procopius's attempt to discredit the rulers of Constantinople, including Theodora. Some of his most outlandish allegations, such as the couple separating their heads from their bodies and flying around as demons, raised significant doubts about the credibility of his accounts. Adding to her remarkable legacy, Theodora, alongside her husband, is recognized as a saint in the Eastern Orthodox Church, with November 14th designated as her feast day. Her journey from courtesan to actress to a revered figure in religious tradition sets her apart, making her a unique example among historical figures who attain sainthood. It's hard to imagine a lady <laughs> earning cash by dancing in her birthday suit and then becoming a saint, but... That's the kind of character development that I live for. <laughs> I actually think Theodora is more iconic than Cleopatra. Don't come for me, Cleo stands. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. You can also let me know if there are any topics that you would like to hear about next. I hope you have a blessed and abundant day. I'm going to go take some sinus medicine because I cannot breathe through my nose.